Richard, who's the producer at uh, Heath, Hush Heath, uh, and uh, telling us a little bit about his really lovely uh, Balfour Brut Rosé Champagne. Yeah, I, I planted um, in 2001, and my philosophy was to take on the French Champagne houses. So I decided to, to literally take on Billy Carr Salmon Rosé and Laurent, Laurent Perry Rosé. And we, we're meticulous. We, we grow and we make and we produce and we use the same grapes exactly as the Champagne region. We've got similar soils with clay and chalk. We've got a climate that's similar to the Champagne region 25 years ago. Um, we use Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier. We, we, we hand prune, we hand pick, everything's done by hand. And we use the same methodology in champagne making as, as the champagne houses. But we also only use the best bit of the juice, the, the premier cru, the first cut, if you like, right. of the juice, um, to, make, to make our sparkling. And um, what I'm looking for with the Balfour is a very light, elegant, pale colour, a uh, very light taste, um, very fine bubbles, and, and a drink, as I said, that's fun. The big challenge for the English wine industry which is fairly young and you know and developing and only very recently is being taken seriously is the wine producers are going to produce too much wine and they'll have their price pushed down and we will go back to sort of a Chilean you know good quality wine right. if you like but without perhaps the heritage and I fear for that I think the idea is that Britain should be producing boutique wines we should we limit the amount we make I think the packaging and the professionalism, the branding around it, it's got to be absolutely the same as if you're a top French champagne house. You can't compromise on anything. And pricing actually is not about cost of production, but it's about strategic market positioning. I mean, you're, with, your, with your price comparison website, I would be very disappointed if the Balfour wasn't the most expensive English sparkling rosé, and it will be, because I'm positioning my product that you're going to be drinking at the Ivy Club, you're going to be buying it from Harrods, you're going to be, you know, I, I know exactly where I want to be positioned. What I don't want to be is competing at, 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 at Tesco's and Waitrose, you know, uh, on prices that, that don't make any sense. Absolutely. With, with things from, from Spain or Prosecco's from Italy and things like that. And, and you know, if you're going to do things properly, it is expensive. Yeah. And, and I want, I, I'm not prepared to compromise. What I'm not prepared to do is produce for a price. And that's the big threat in the wine industry generally, right. that people produce for a price. And you're seeing, I mean, you know, what you're seeing at the moment, which is very interesting, is that champagne as a brand, in my view, has become very damaged. It used to be, 20 years ago, you go out for a glass, I'd like a glass of champagne, and it meant something. Today you ask for a glass of champagne, and frankly, you're going to, you, the range is from here to here. Yeah. And there's a lot of very, very poor sparkling wines called champagne because they're made in the champagne region absolutely whereas what's happened with the sparkling wine world it's been very interesting with the, with the, with the growth in, in in america and australia of, of, of the wine industry has been that you've got carbonated sparkling wines which is the prosecco type wine which is the traditional sparkling wine and then you've got sparkling wines which are the meta traditional or meta champenoise made exactly like champagne but not actually grown in champagne and those wines, if you like, uh, are now competing with the best champagnes in the world. And that's what we're doing here. And you've done, I, I think you're, you're very well placed and you've got an excellent product and I wish you all the best with it. Thanks for chatting with us. Thank you.